Hello and welcome to Artifacts with Edie. My name is Edie Steiner. This is a live show and tell from of the artifacts from the Summit County Historical Society. I'm a school-based music therapist with Akron Public Schools and I'm also the shepherdess of the property here at the Perkins Stone Mansion and the Summit County Historical Society. On Friday, Owen and Rudy showed that they were smart like a border collie taking home our weekly trophy in our game show, Are You Smarter Than a Border Collie? Today's episode will be the first in the series to help you study throughout the week. Can you take home the title of Smarter Than a Border Collie? Owen isn't rooting for you, you know, because he's one now, halfway to two. I'm rooting for you, so make sure you study hard. Oh, nothing, Owen. It's um, it's just history fun. Uh, go back to what you were doing. Um, each episode this week, remember, it's your study guide. So good morning to our scholars who are watching us from Bridges Learning Center, and a special hello to the emerging scholars from East Community Learning Center and Betty Jane Community Learning Center. Today, I'm broadcasting to you live from inside of the Summit County Historical Society's Carriage House, which is on the grounds of the Perkins Stone Mansion in the heart of the city of Akron. What's a carriage house? Well, it's a garage, basically, where the Perkins family once kept their horse-drawn carriage. In episode 15, we explained and shared with you that it was the 75th anniversary of Victory in Europe Day, or VE Day, where the Allies accepted an unconditional surrender of the Nazis during World War II. We also shared that it was John Brown's 220th birthday and our puppy, Owen Brown, it was also his first, his first birthday. What was your best birthday celebration? Owen has never had a birthday before and he's looking for some things to compare and contrast with to make sure that his birthday measured up. He was lucky enough to have his brother, Tripp, come over, but he's still looking for recommendations for, because hashtag first birthday and he wants to make it hashtag epic. So today, we are trying to find another artifact that has to do with World War II. Thank goodness for Dave Gase, who is the Society's Outreach Presenter. He was able to share photos and stories and artifacts from the Historical Society's Remember When program on the home front during World War II. So he allowed us to look through these things, so let's get to it. On the home front, that's here in the United States, many Americans were asked to give things up to help the United States troops and help us win World War II. World War II took place between 1941 and 1945 when my grandparents were in their 20s. I know what you're thinking. Edie, you don't look old enough to have grandparents who would be over 100 years old, but let me give you some context. I used my beta machine to record Michael Jackson's thriller, and I saw him front row at the Ridgefield Coliseum. So during World War, I, World War II, the United States government asked Americans like you and me to conserve or ration everything. Just like today, this meant planning, thinking ahead, and patience. During these times, there were limits set on how much sugar, butter, coffee, and meat a family could buy each month. This is what rationing is. It helped to save these items for the war effort. Each family or individual was given rationing coupons each week. To ration means that each family received a fixed portion when products were very scarce. Blue stamps were given to families for canned goods and frozen items. Red stamps were for meats, canned fish, butter, cheese, and canned milk. When you went to the grocery store, you needed both the ration stamp and the cash to purchase the rationed item. When these stamps were gone, you could not buy any more of those things on the list until you received more stamps, even if you had the money to do so. Wait, no more coffee unless I have a stamp? Oh goodness, well, let's get back to our story because gasoline was also rationed. People that had class stamps A, B, and C just couldn't drive for fun. 
The Class A stamps, for example, allowed you only three gallons of gas a week. Imagine that amount of gas per week today. During this time, many people use three gallons or more just to drive to and from work each day. So during this time, only necessary traveling was allowed. It was a lot like what we're experiencing during the COVID-19 pandemic, but just as people had in the past have done, we will get through this too. Let's face it though, we have had to sacrifice and we've had to be very, very patient. During World War II, to conserve gasoline for the military, people walked and they took buses and they stopped eating canned vegetables and fruits because the military needed the tin. During this time, people may have taken a trolley bus like this instead of driving to work. The Brill number 103 trackless trolley bus model 44 SMT is seen in this photo. Brill manufactured over 45,000 trolley buses and railroad cars. Here is a fleet of trolley buses in downtown Akron in 1941. Did you know that during this time, people also dressed up to go downtown? Young girls would wear hats and gloves just like their mothers. Boys would wear button-up shirts, sometimes a tie, slacks, and their best shoes. Some people even um, some people even trains to took trains to and they rode bicycles. Even some rode horses to get to where they needed to go. Even automobile tires were rationed to save rubber for building tires for military vehicles, for gas masks, life rafts, as well as parts for um, military vehicles and airplanes. So in fact. There were no cars made for people like you and me, otherwise known as civilians, during the times of 1942 to late 1945. Scrap drives were held to collect and reuse rubber, metal, and paper to help the soldiers win the war. This is a picture of the B.F. Goodrich scrap drive here in Akron. So families were asked to scrap most items made from metal, newspaper, rags, items made from rubber, and even kitchen fat from cooking your meats. Kitchen fat contains glycerin, which was necessary to build explosives for the military. Who would have known? The effort to win the war took every American banding together on the home front. Just like each of us and the ways we have helped protect our medical personnel and most vulnerable Americans by staying home and wearing masks. It's now time to find out what the artifact of the day is, but first our review. Question one, what was rationed during World War II? Was it A, sugar, B, coffee, C, gasoline, or D, all of the above? If you selected D, you are right. All of the above, families could buy limited amounts of sugar, coffee, gasoline, but only with their, you got it, ration stamps. The Emergency Price Control Act um, granted the Office of Price Administration the authority to set price limits and ration food and other commodities in order to discourage hoarding and ensure that equitable distribution of scarce resources was available for all people. Um, that reminds me, honey, we need to pick up toilet paper on our way home. So if you could write that down. Oh, sorry, question two. During World War II, Americans were expected to do what? Was it A, plan ahead with passion, B, engage in civic activities, C, wait for the administration, or D, use stamps to ration. Great work, scholars. If you selected D, then you were really listening to today's story. If you selected A or B, you're actually also correct. Planning ahead with passion and engaging in civic activities was very important to these times. It's just not a um, part of our story today. The last question is a true or false question. Today's artifact helped people develop ways to feed their family and assist in the war effort on the home front. You got it. 
Today's artifact of the day was used for planning ahead. It was used for civic engagement and resourcefulness. So what could this artifact be? If you guessed a calendar to plan for a victory garden, then you are an amazing planner and a great listener. During World War II, the military needed lots of fresh vegetables to feed our troops, our soldiers, our sailors, our Marines that were training here at home. And this meant that people um, not in the military had a lot less to choose from. So citizens were asked to plant their own victory gardens and grow as many of their own vegetables as possible. So these gardens were to help provide for our family's needs. Over 20 million Americans planted Victory Gardens and these gardens grew 40% of the vegetables consumed in the US during the war. Here's a close up of a gardening book. Can you name some vegetables that you like? And did they include any of the following? Carrots, peas, broccoli, corn, tomatoes, squash, beans. How many of those vegetables would you have planted in your Victory Garden? Victory Gardens were planted in people's backyards around the roof of their garage. Most gardens, um, most garage roofs were flat back then, so it was easy to plant a garden on them. But what if you didn't have enough space in your yard for a garden? Well, then you would plant your garden in a Victory Garden in a community space. So one example of a local uh, community victory garden was in Goodyear Heights. The field off Newton Street on the north side was an area where many people had individual gardens planted. Today, we know this area as part of Goodyear Heights Metro Park. So Let's Grow Akron is also a local organization that has community gardens around Akron. And they also have a beginner's garden resource uh, sheet that is available on their website. We have um, a website that's going to come up at the bottom of the page where you can find that resource for your family. It's going to look a little bit like the uh, food gardener calendar that I have here. Inside of this booklet are some plans for different months. Um, it has each month planning ahead and telling you what, the, what your family needs to do and planning dates and what should maybe be growing during that time and also how to harvest those things. So we will share our link in our Facebook page and in our comments for you. And um, please consider sharing your gardens with us in our comments today on our Facebook page. So I'm going to head home and start planning for my own victory garden. So I am set and ready for the rest of my day. So I will see you tomorrow at 1130 for another episode of Artifacts with Edie, where I show and tell the artifacts from the Summit County Historical Society, where history is always within reach. Thank you for joining us.